Hello, this is North Star Runner. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about hydration and nutrition while on the run. Uh, proper health, nutrition, and hydration are important throughout the day, not just while running. Uh, but during this video, I'll focus on diet and hydration during, um, during the run. Um, I'll take a look at, at diet and hydration during the rest of the day in another video. Um, as with most running tips, you'll find a wide range of advice on this. Um, what works for one person may not work for another. Um, I'm going to show you some of my preferences with the hope that this works well for you. But the number one tip that I can give when it comes to nutrition and hydration on the run is to experiment with this during training. Uh, find out what works for you and then implement that same strategy um, in your upcoming races. Keep in mind your hydration and nutrition set strategy will vary greatly depending upon the distance of your run. Um, I like to eat, um, and, and one of my favorite stories was actually from Dean Carnazzi. Um, he w told a story about how he would order a large Hawaiian pizza and have it delivered, in, delivered to him actually on his routes during some of his ultra runs. Uh, of course, he, you know, if you're familiar with him, he runs... Uh, not just 100 mile runs, but you know, 200 and you know, 300, 400 and more. Um, so obviously, he needs a lot more fuel during his runs than your your typical runner. Um, now that's certainly one extreme, and and obviously, probably not something that most of us will ever do. Uh, personally, I like to keep a couple of gel packs with me for any run that that uh, goes over two hours uh, or more, um, or or approximately greater than 15 miles or so. Um, I'll typically take one about an hour into the run and then another one when I have about four or five miles left to go, um, depending on upon how I feel. If I'm feeling strong, I might not take that second one. Um, it just kind of depends on how I feel. Um, you'll see a wide range of recommendations on this um, with several recommending that people take more um, food, more gel packs uh, or whatever food they bring with them. Um, I've tried to take as much as one gel pack every uh, four miles, and I just find that that's simply too hard on my stomach and leads to all sorts of like gastrointestinal issues and, and uh, problems that you don't want to deal with during a run, um, or ever for that matter. Um, I actually tried this um, once during a marathon, um, and actually it was one of the few times that I, I considered taking a DNF. Um, never did never did it uh, never took a dnf but but strongly considered at that point uh, i actually walked up to or, or was walking towards the um uh one of the aid workers at an aid station one of the medical workers and um was about to pull pull out and and i got to within about two feet of him and turned around and, and gave it another go um but anyways um I just had to stop taking um, those gels during that race and only drink water for several slow miles um, after that point uh, before I started to actually feel a little bit better. Um, I largely attribute this to the, the maltodextrin that's um, found in those gel packets combined with um, all the sugar and, and other stuff that they put in there. Um, and, and it's supposed to keep in mind, it's not just in the gel pack, it's, it's also in the sports drink. And I was at, and during that race in particular, I was taking sports drinks in the, um, in the hydration stops as well. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, I highly recommend taking plain water, uh, if you do use any gels and not combining that with any type of sports drinks. Um, perhaps, um, uh, I just have a sensitive stomach, but I, I, found I can't do both during long runs without experiencing some sort of issue. Um, so in summary, stick with gels or sports drinks, but, but just don't do both. Um, also keep in mind that the type of gels matter um, as well. I found that I have fewer problems when using more natural types of gels, um, such as spring energy. Um, it's one of my favorite ones um, versus using a, a one that you'll find at a lot of races, uh, you know, those goo packets. Um, or, or those power gels. Um, even just plain honey, actually, uh, for me, seems to cause fewer problems than using some of those, those other, other branded um, energy gels. Um, I focus on gel primarily because I have a hard time chewing um, while I run, um, especially during the later stages of a really hard race. Um, if I'm, I'm trying to maintain a, a quick pace um, in a longer race, I just can't. I find I just can't chew. 
that well. But um, during some of my solo or ultra runs, I do find other items such as um, jelly beans. I love the, the Jelly Belly Sport beans um, or even real food like bananas or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or, or uh, one of my favorite salted nut rolls. Um, to be a great alternative to any kind of gel or, or, or those, those other, um, you know, race specific packets, um, dry real food as well. Um, at slower paces, I find I can digest those, um, with really little or no, no problem, um, either chewing or any like GI type of issues. Um, other than water, um, personally, I like to use noon tablets, um, the noon tablets just kind of ensure that I keep my electrolytes up without worrying about any stomach issues from any added sugars like I previously mentioned. Um, during supported races, um, outside of uh, a, a couple of gels, I'll alternate water with whatever sports drink that they serve. Um, so if I, it, in between those two gel packets that I typically will take in a, a longer race, I might might take a sports drink or two, but I try to space it out. And I usually keep about a two to one ratio of uh, plain water to sports drink um, at the various stops, again, to minimize any potential stomach issues that, that might crop up. On training runs, I, I don't usually bring any water or sports drinks unless I plan to be out for more than an hour. Um, this means that I only bring water on maybe one or two runs per week. Um, even during the peak of my training, most of my runs are, are right at that hour mark. Um, so I, I find, for me at least, if I stay hydrated throughout the day, I, I don't really need to bring any water um, for, for the, those typical runs. Um, again, unless I'm going for a longer run of more than an hour or so. Um, or alter if it's an extremely hot day, um, I, I might bring it with me, um, even if it's one of those shorter runs, even if it's a half an hour or less, if it's really hot and humid out. Um, now, I do have to point out, obviously, with the name of the site, now, I, I live up in the north, and while the summers do get pretty hot and humid, um, most of the year, it's, it's not really that much of an issue for me. Um, I used to travel a lot to Arizona. When I did that, I, I, I would take uh, just a small handheld water bottle with me, even if I was only planning on being out for a half an hour or so. That's a pretty broad overview of what I do to stay hydrated and fueled during my runs. Uh, again, experiment to find out what works for you. If you do have stomach issues, try minimizing multi maltodextrin and, and focus on more natural type of foods. Um, in later videos, I'll show you how I carry my gels, uh, my food, my noon, and, and water during my runs, um, it, it, both in my training runs as well as the um, kind of the less supported, um, typically ultra type of races that I do. Um, but for now, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel for more running tips, tricks, reviews, and motivational tips. Um, now, just get out there and go for your next run. Thank you. Mm -hmm.